As we enter the sixth parak, now the second half of the Megillah, we have really reached the turning point when the story goes from the plan against the Jews, from the plan of how the Jews would be destroyed, to already seeing the glory days, to seeing this, the narrative shift in favor of the Jewish people. Because in the sixth parak, is the famous night in which Achashverosh cannot sleep. As Rabbi Matenki mentioned yesterday in the fifth parak, the equality which Esther seems to be attributing to both Achashverosh and Haman, greatly disturbing Achashverosh, causing him to wonder what was going on, what, what had he done wrong, what was going to be coming his way. And so being unable to sleep, he realized something must be, something must be off. So he calls to his servants to bring him a book of chronicles, to bring him to look in his records to see what, he's, what he was missing. And of course, he's reminded at that moment of Mordechai, who saved Achashverosh's life from the plot of Bixan and Seresh. And he decided that it needed to do something great for Mordechai. At which point, of course, Haman enters into the courtyard and he asks who's outside and bring him in. He asks Haman, who am I going to honor? If, who, how should I honor that person who I want to honor? And of course, Haman, who in his mind is continuing the narrative from yesterday of the equality of where Haman is broaching already right on the heels or even equal to Ahasuerus, thinking it must be me at this point in time, suggests to go all out and says, maybe here's my chance. I can dress up as none other than the king. And so he suggests, well, of course, Ahasuerus, if you're going to respect someone, you're going to honor someone, dress them in your garments, give them your horse, put them essentially in your place, let them be you for a day. To which Ahasuerus, of course, says back to Haman, very nice, do that to Mordechai. And now not only has Ahasuerus begun to notice this shift, Haman has begun to notice this shift. And so he returns home to his own wife, Ovel the Chafui Rosh. The Medrash, of course, telling us that includes having garbage on his head, and that Haman's downfall begins rapidly at this point in time. The Vinahafahu of the first five prokim, first five prokim, which focused on the destruction, the plot to destroy the Jewish people that Haman had, Haman's rise to power, Haman's climax in power to the point in which he thinks he is becoming the equal of Achashverosh. Just at that moment, Vinahafahu, we begin to see how the original two prakim of setting the scene start to take over and Haman's rapid decline. And the rest of the story is history. But it is this parak, the sixth parak, the difficulty sleeping of Achashverosh and Haman's desire to get this kavod, which really was going to be displaced from him upon Mordechai. It is this parak in which we begin to see the narrative shift from the harm, the potential harm of the Jewish people to the salvation, to the uprising of Mordechai and to the downfall of Haman.